Welcome everyone. In this video series, we will learn how to reverse engineer programs which communicate over a network and try and find how they work internally. So in this specific example, we will look at a common download manager called Download Accelerator Plus. And what we will try to do is to figure out how this works internally using the HTTP protocol. So let's get started. So Download Accelerator Pro is actually used to download large files from the internet. So let's first select a large file. Uh, let's say we go ahead and take one of the videos on security tube. So we go ahead, add it. Uh, but before we add it, the tool which we will use in order to analyze the protocol would be Wireshark. So what we can do is go ahead and start a capture. So we select the appropriate adapter. In this example, I am running an XP machine in VMware. So I will go ahead and select the VMware adapter. So I have started the sniffing now. Now let's go back to Download Accelerator Pro and go ahead and add this link. So this is the file we want to download. Let's press OK. So DAP is actually checking the size of the file, sets its 110.42 MB. Now let's go ahead and save it. So if you notice, now the download has started using DAP. So there seem to be four different threads which are downloading the same file parallelly, right? So now let's try and reverse engineer of how all these four threads are working parallelly to download the same file. So logically, what we can think of is that there is some way by which HTTP allows to split the files into multiple parts and allows the client to download them. So now the question is exactly what could be in the protocol which allows this to happen. So you know, we are collecting a large amount of trace. So let's go ahead and stop it. And let's see what we can figure out. So the first thing which we need to understand is that whenever you go ahead and request for a file or any other resource on a web server, you do it using the HTTP GET request. There are other forms of requests as well, such as POST, which is generally used to submit form data. We also have HEAD options and a couple of others. In this video, we will just concentrate on the GET request, simply because that is what is used to fetch files from remote servers using the HTTP protocol. So let's go back now and go ahead and scroll up. So what we need to do first is to distill the traffic down. So what we are interested in is first of all, just the HTTP traffic. So we've gone ahead and, you know, added a filter. Now the next thing which we are interested in is just the HTTP get traffic, right? Because that is how files are being requested. So if you notice here is where the first get request has been made, right? So what we can do is we can click on the HTTP protocol transfer part, uh, select the request method, which is get and go ahead and apply a filter. What will this will do now is only show packets which have been fetched using the HTTP get request. So if you notice, this is where our file is being called. So get slash 64 hyphen bit hyphen imports hyphen rebuilding so on and so forth dot FLV was the file which we told DAP to get. So now let's go ahead and add a further filter. So basically what we would want is just to look at get requests between our computer and that remote host from which we are fetching the FLV files. So let's go to the IP protocol and actually apply a filter on the destination host, which is the remote server. 
So in this case, we say and selected in the apply as filter. So now if you notice, we just have four HTTP GET requests, right? And if you remember, there were actually four threads in DAP which were actually fetching the files. So, you know, just kind of intuitively, we can conclude that all these four different HTTP GET requests were made by those four different threads. Now let's try and look into the HTTP protocol header to see exactly what might have happened. So if you actually notice, this is the HTTP protocol of the uh, header of the first request. We have the request method, request URI, uh, request version, the host, accept, and basically user agent connection and range. Now let's go on to the second request. Uh, so what has changed? We actually see everything else is identical apart from the connection says keep alive and the range has changed. Let's go to the third request. We'll actually see everything is same apart from the range which has once again changed. Finally, in the fourth request, once again, the range is what has changed. Everything else is constant. So immediately we can conclude that this header field uh, HTTP get header field is what is being used to convey to the server exactly which range of bytes of this remote FLV file the thread is requesting for. So if you notice in the first request, the range starts from zero. In the second request, it actually starts from some number 289945628257. In the very next request, if you notice, the starting point now is the ending point in the last thread. So in the last thread, the requested range was still 57891259. In the third thread, which is the next one, the starting point is the same. This one ends in 86836890 and the next one begins exactly at the same position and ends in 11578258. So what is happening is that using the range header field, the download accelerator manager is actually telling the remote server which part of the file it wants to download, right? So now let's just verify whether the entire file has been covered. So let's actually run calculator and let's actually just look at the final thread which was invoked and let's take this value this is all in bytes, right? As we can clearly see here, range is in bytes. Uh, 115782 and then we have 518. So this is bytes it's divided by 1024 to get the number of kilobytes. Divide it further by 1024 to get the megabyte. So if you notice right now, it says 110. 0.41 megabytes. If we go back to download accelerator pro, what we will notice is that these two values are exactly the same 110.42 MB and this actually says 110.418. So basically they've rounded it off, right? 418 rounded off would be 0.42. So in this way, the entire file has been requested from the remote server by breaking it up into various parts and each one of these threads is downloading one part. So this was a very simple example in which we saw how to reverse engineer a network program and the protocol it was using and figure out how it worked. So what one can do after this is look up exactly what is range. So let's go here and do a quick query. So basically HTTP get header range. So if you notice quick reference to HTTP headers, let's click on that. Uh, scroll down, we'll actually come to range, which basically says restricts the request to some parts specified as ranges of octets in the resource. Resource in this case is the file we are downloading. 
and here is where the http protocol specification talks about the byte ranges so now what one could do is actually look this up figure out exactly how the protocol works and maybe write their own version of a download accelerator plus or a wget so the idea basically is that a lot of times we might not know the exact protocol specification a network program is using to get its job done however by reverse engineering the network traffic it sends and receives using wireshark it is very clear or i would actually say it can become very clear exactly what it is doing under the hood so i leave it as an exercise to you to try out other programs uh, you will actually find programs such as winamp and others which communicate with their servers it's very simple to actually reverse engineer that communication even if the protocol at times is proprietary of course apart from the cases where all the data traffic is encrypted so we are just talking about in most cases plain text protocol transfer or protocol communication between the client and the server now one uh, exercise i will leave it to you which i'll cover in the next video is how to go ahead and reverse engineer the alexa toolbar so if you notice the alexa uh, firefox add on actually shows the site rank to the right hand side you can download it from alexa.com and then you can click it and actually get to see the uh, site rank and other overviews about the site so you can download the toolbar from alexa.com right download the alexa toolbar so my exercise for you is reverse engineer the protocol which this toolbar is using and see if you can write your own program uh, which can go ahead and query the alexa site rank given a site okay so that's all for this video i'd really appreciate if you could leave a comment behind because that will encourage me to make more videos also we've just released the cfp for security tube com uh we are planning a great event where we are inviting researchers from all over the world to share their work it's going to be in november 6 to 8 so uh you know there is already an advertisement on the top of this page please click have a look and spread the word that's all for this video thank you